Hi everyone, welcome to this quick video to show you how to take a surface from Civil 3D into Revit as a topo surface. So here I am in Civil 3D. One of the important things to remember with uh, the Autodesk collections now is that you have Revit and Civil 3D available, so all of these workflows you'll be able to use um, in due course. So you can see here I have a surface in Civil 3D. At the minute it's actually showing me the contours, so I need to change that. So I'm going to right click over the surface and go to Edit Surface Style. And on the Display tab here, you can see that for the plane and the model, we are showing the major and minor contours. So in this case, I'm going to show triangles or triangulation for both views and say OK. And you can now see we have a triangulation model. Now, one of the things is that the triangulation that Civil 3D uses, the algorithm that it uses, could be quite different from the Revit algorithm. So, as an example, if I go to the line command here, uh, you could imagine maybe that the Revit um, tool to create topography could actually create a triangle, perhaps something like this. Now, of course, if it creates a triangle like that, then the level difference between this point here and this point here on this line could be significant. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we take this Civil 3D surface out as AutoCAD 3D faces, and we'll then build a surface in Revit that actually will absolutely mimics this surface here. So our first job is to take this out into AutoCAD. So what I'm going to do here is just get an isometric view. We'll start by first going in here and choosing export. So we'll do export Civil 3D drawing. And you can see here that it's going to take uh, my desktop as my current folder and it's just going to prefix it with S. That, that's absolutely fine. And we'll export this out. Now what should happen here is I'll lose all of the Civil 3D functionality for this copy of the DWG file. And that's fine, that's exactly what I want to do. So here we are in AutoCAD, and we'll start by opening up the drawing we've just created. So let's open this up. Okay, and the idea is what we want to do is we want to just uh, retain the surface, which is actually these 3D faces uh, just in here. Notice how Civil 3D has converted those to 3D faces. If I list those, you can see there, there are 3D faces there. And we also want to retain these circles here with the coordinates. Now the idea is with these, is these are markers that we're going to use to coordinate inside of Revit. So one of them is my survey station, the other one is the corner of my building structure. So what I want to do here is just turn off layers that I don't uh, want to delete. So let's do that here. Okay, now the, the remainder of the model I can just erase. So we don't need any of that. Okay, and then we'll return all the layers back on again. Okay, so let's now switch those on. Um, okay, and you can now see we've retained our layer information. So let's delete that. We don't need that either. Okay, so what we've now got are our datums and our 3D faces. So we can just save that. You'll notice that I have opened this up in AutoCAD so we don't get any um, Civil 3D information back into the file. So I can now close this down. And what we can now do is go directly into Revit. So here we are in Revit. You can start with your favorite template. In this case, I'm going to start with um, a plain structural template. I'm going to start by opening up our site plane. And the reason for this is that the, I'm sure you noticed, but the view range will go up to uh, 100 meters. So essentially, any topography above uh, sea level, I'll be able to see. Let's also switch on the uh, site category and we want project base point and survey point on. Okay and here they are. So now we can start by linking in and inserting our uh, CAD document. Okay now we've got a number of options here. I could scale it prior to bringing it in or I could scale it here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just scale it in here. So let's make that 1000 in here. Notice I've got custom factor. And in this case, it will just be auto center to center. And it will say open here to bring that topo in. Now, first thing you'll notice is we don't actually see any of the datum information. And the reason being is the 3D faces are actually hiding it. So in here, we can change our visual style to wireframe. So we can now locate and see these datums. 
Okay, so I'm going to move this uh, survey. So I'm going to start by moving it from uh, this circle here, which is the corner of my building pad. So we'll go to move. I'm just going to use a little snap override here to centers, just to make sure I get that point accurately. And that needs to be dropped down on the point. Okay. So I can now select the uh, project base point and I'm now, now able to actually type in the exact coordinates. So the, the north value here, in this case, it's 221, 329, 113.0. So I'm multiplying the coordinate by 1000. Yep. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the um, east and west value in here. So let's just zoom in so we can read that again. So east west value is 603. 297.679.0. Uh, okay, so there it is. Yep. Now, what we can do is we can either leave the survey point where it is at the minute, which would be at the ordnance survey base, uh, which is the false origin, or we can actually uh, bring it to station one in here. Now, I'm going to show you how we would do this. We can select the survey point, and you'll notice it's clipped at the minute. We're going to unclip that, and we can now move that across somewhere about there. Okay. And what I can now do, of course, is drop the survey point at the correct station. Now, you've probably already noticed as I'm dragging this, you can see the coordinates are actually moving. And of course, if I lock over a, um, station one, we can just check and compare the coordinates just to make sure it's um, as we'd expect. And if you look at the coordinates here and also on the screen, you can see that they tally and correspond to the station coordinates. Once we've done that, um, what I'd suggest is that you would go ahead and pin all of this information. We don't want any of this information to change. So there we are. I'm going to uh, pin all of that information in there. Okay, let's now create a 3D view. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that our topography um, category is switched on in here. And also, what I'm going to do is, I've got, the whole point of this exercise is to show you how the um, the triangulation is identical to Civil 3D. So I'm going to make sure I see my triangulation, and just for this example, I'm going to turn off the primary and secondary contours. So, on the Massing and Site tab, we can now click on Topo Surface. I can create this from an import instance, which is this here. And of course here we have to be very careful that we use the layer that the surface sits on. So in this case it was just a layer called surface. Okay, we'll give that a few seconds. Okay, so we can now click on the uh, topo surface tool. And in this case I'm going to say uh, select import instance. Now we have to make sure that we pick the correct layer where the triangulation is residing on. Um, now in this case, um, I've put it on this layer here. I should have put it on surface really. And you can now see that we have these points laid down. Right, so if I now do um, green tick to finish this, okay, we've now got a Revit surface over the top of this one here. Now. It's going to be quite difficult to actually um, check what's going on because obviously these, these Revit surface is directly overlaid onto the Civil 3D one but you can see that it is a perfect match and that's really what we was trying to achieve. So now I can go into Visibility Graphics and I can just switch off the imported categories and here's my Revit surface underneath. So let's go ahead and uh, shade that. I'll just change the, the coloration of this. Um, let's choose uh, grass or planting or something. Okay, that's all good there. And we'll use that. Okay. Oops, I selected air. <laughs> Let's choose that again. Okay, that's it there. Okay, and there we have it. Yep. So, um, there's a, a, a bit of an insight into how you can actually accurately create uh, Revit topography from Civil 3D and of course make sure that the whole thing is completely coordinated. Um, just one other note of course when you're putting your spot coordinates down so if I start to actually place some coordinates out from here obviously the coordinates are now in millimeters and, and you can see the default is to have the north thing first and then the east thing. We'll need to obviously edit that so we can pick on the um, spot coordinate, edit type 
and under the unit formats here I'd suggest putting this back into meters and of course you can change your precision if you want and maybe put an M after it so we know that that is in meters um, and down here you can see that we can just swap over the uh, top and bottom values so the top value is east west bottom value is north south and there we have it yep so fully coordinated um, obviously what we'd have to do again in here is switch off our um, imported surface from Civil 3D and then in here we can switch on our um, our topo yep so let's put that back on okay and here it is okay hope that's been useful thanks very much